You're watching Press TV's News Review. Welcome. Palestinians have denounced Israel for ignoring responsibility to ensure the availability of COVID vaccines to the people in the occupied territories. In a statement, the Palestinian Foreign Ministry says that Israel has committed racial discrimination by depriving the Palestinians of their right to health care. It says the attempt by the Palestinian leadership to secure the vaccines from various sources doesn't exempt Tel Aviv from its duties as an occupying power. The regime is facing growing criticism since it began the vaccination drive, mandating officials to exclude the Palestinians in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. The Palestinian Authority saying it expects the first COVID vaccine doses in March under a deal with British drug maker AstraZeneca. A top Palestinian health official saying that other pharmaceuticals have also been contacted for supplies. Time now to get some insight on this. Uh, we'll first go to our correspondent Ramallah Mona Kendil. We'll also have uh, Mazin Akumsi, a Palestinian scientist and author, joining us out of uh, Bethlehem. Now let's go to uh, Mona. Uh, I know that uh, the Palestinians in occupied territories are facing a plethora of different kinds of restrictions, especially those in the Gaza Strip or under this crippling siege for long years. And now on top of that comes the COVID pandemic. Tell us a bit more about what the situation is like there and uh, how difficult it could be to get their hands on vaccines from elsewhere. It's very difficult because uh, uh, the uh, Palestinians and the occupied uh, West Bank, let's just speak about the occupied West Bank and uh, Jerusalem Al-Quds, it's under Israeli occupation. At the same time, the Gaza Strip is completely uh, besieged. So uh, these vaccines, if uh, they are allowed to enter the Palestinian territories, uh, they should be approved by the Israelis. Uh, that's why the Palestinian Authority accused Israel of ignoring its resp responsibilities to ensure uh, vaccines uh, that uh, should be available in the occupied uh, territories. Today, we are speaking about Israel that has already become the world leader in uh, vaccinations per capita. Uh, Palestinians uh, in the occupied uh, West Bank, uh, the Gaza Strip still uh, will be uh, facing a lot of difficulties and need uh, to uh, secure their first uh, uh, supplies. Uh, Israel is occupying the Palestinian territories, so it has, uh, according to the Palestinians and according to the international laws, it has has uh, uh, a responsibility to ensure uh, the vaccines. But uh, let's uh, not to forget uh, that at the uh, first of the uh, spread of the COVID-19, uh, Israel closed a number of, uh, uh, of uh, clinics in Jerusalem Al-Quds and in a number of areas that, prov uh, that uh, uh, serve the Palestinians in order uh, not to allow Palestinians uh, test uh, uh, for the uh, corona uh, virus at that time uh, it was condemned uh, uh, globally uh, uh, so it's not uh, they don't care if the Palestinians receive the vaccines or not oh, unfortunately okay now let's uh, let me ask uh, Mazen Gamsia the Palestinian scientist and author in Bethlehem uh, Mazen it's the Tel Aviv regime's job to provide to and facilitate the actually uh, the Palestinians access to COVID vaccines isn't it uh, its job, so why is it shirking responsibility? How can it? Well, what we have here is an apartheid regime, and there's apartheid also in medicine. <laughs> you know, there's an international convention uh, on the crime of apartheid and racial discrimination, which specifically says that people living in the same country should not be subjected to do different sets of laws and that's how it defines apartheid. And we have two different sets of uh, privileges and laws that apply to Israelis and ones that apply to Palestinians. Uh, for example, Israelis living here in Bethlehem or in Ramallah in a settlement uh, next to the Palestinian community, the Israeli settlers, colonial settlers, who are illegal per international law, they get their vaccinations Whereas the Palestinian residents and native people, indigenous people of this land, don't have vaccinations. This is medical apartheid, and there's nothing, you know, uh, 
in international law, it's very, very clear what it is. And so what we Palestinians have called for yeah. is ending the regime of apartheid, which affects all these spheres, including the medical spheres, the vaccinations, availability of medicines, the destruction of our economy that result in the fact that hospitals are not coping with the number of patients uh, in Gaza, especially. I mean, it's, it's bad in the West Bank, but in Gaza, it's even worse because the hospitals are overwhelmed. People are literally being left to die at home because there's no space in the hospitals for them. And Mazan, is there any international organization or agency uh, trying to do something uh, and to kind of provide vaccines for the Palestinians or Palestinians should rely on their own uh, very limited resources to do that? Well, the World Health Organization is working with the Palestinian health officials to try and facilitate transfer of uh, vaccines a uh, big uh, segment of this is also cost to vaccines. Who's going to pay for them? Israel has, uh, is a very rich country, gets billions of dollars from the United States to the tune of $15 million a day, actually. Um, and so they have a lot of resources to buy vaccines. We being under occupation are not, is not a poor country. We're not a poor country like countries that don't have much natural resources. We have been a rich country, but we were intentionally impoverished, intentionally de de developed because Israel wants to drive us out. And this is part of the reason why we don't have the economic wherewithals, the, the resources to pay for vaccines. Um, and basically compete with the rich countries. There's also around the world, I mean, it's not just here. You have an issue with rich countries getting vaccines and poor or developing enough vaccines. And even sometimes within the same country, like Saudi Arabia, the royal family is getting the vaccines, but the rest of the poor Saudis who are barefooted in the desert, they don't have vaccines. Unfortunately. Thank you very much for your comments. Mazen Gomsia, Palestinian scientist and author from Bethlehem. Thank you. We also had Timona Kandil, our correspondent, who joined us uh, from Ramallah. And that's it for this edition of the News Review. I'm Press TV. Thank you for watching.